This match has more weight to it now because these two still can't be separated. Croatia seemed to be falling off slightly, but Ukraine also drew against Northern Ireland. So this is what your group is looking like. Ukraine have a game in hand and could easily overtake me. Um, I'm just glad that we are six points ahead of Austria, or five points, however much it is. But yeah, I mean, we really need to win here today. Crossed in by Ukraine. Off the post and in. And I think that was Andre Foreign Yeah, it was. Oh my god, Croatia, really? Like, how are we doing this badly? I don't understand it. We we thumped the team 8-0, and then we can't even win a game now, like, properly. Like, Andorra really showed us levels in their matches. I'm not even joking. We were so lucky to come away with wins in those games. Mansukic to cross it in. It's not headed properly. Here we go. It's Eduardo off the goalkeeper there. Olic, go for the strike. Oh, that was not a good finesse shot. Eduardo in the back of the net and it's 1-1. I thought it actually went wide for a second, but he equalises for Croatia and that's great. Thank you, Eduardo, for getting that equaliser. It's a 1-1 between these two and again, these two can't be separated. Even though Ukraine took an early lead, I just don't feel like Croatia are hitting their potential at the moment. I feel like we've been struggling in these last few games. Maybe that's the nature of qualifying, I don't know, but in a normal run, I'd be flattening everyone if I was winning 8-0 against one person in the group. Into the middle here, Mandzukic didn't use his strength. Come on, dude, like, we all know you're pretty tough. Rakitic. Crossed it in. Header. Oh, what a save. There's 20 minutes in this game for either of these two sides to take that top spot and run away with it. If Ukraine win this match, then they'll have their game in hand against probably, like, I don't know, Andorra or something. And um, they'll end up winning the group probably. But if I can do it, then it'll give me real good chance to actually win the group. Here we go. That's a great ball. Mario Mandzukic just denied by the keeper. Through ball. Eduardo's going through. It better not be offside. Can we get a late winner? Can we? No, we can't. What are you doing, dude? How are you missing these? Oh my days. We did this against Andorra. We're not clinical in front of goal anymore. F ever since we won 8-0, like, this game has gone, nah, Nah, Croatia bad now. It's like, what? Well, an underwhelming draw again with Ukraine this time. I'm really disappointed with Croatia. The fact they've fallen off quite hard in this qualifying since winning 8-0. Um, I think that was a curse, to be honest, that result when we won against Northern Ireland. I think Northern Ireland did some sort of curse on us because ever since we've been struggling. Okay, yes, we drew against Ukraine when we were 1-0 down. Fair enough. But I wanted to win that match and we have the tools to win every single match. So this is how the group is looking like then at the sort of just over the halfway point. And um, from Croatia to I'd say Northern Ireland, anyone could qualify in those top two spots because my spot is under threat from Ukraine. But then the second spot is under threat from Austria and Northern Ireland. So we've got to play those two teams yet. And we've got to just pin them down and say, no, you're not qualifying today. We are in Luxembourg for this one. For Croatia's seventh match or sixth match, I can't remember now. But we need to win in order to get more ground on Ukraine and hope that Ukraine drop points along the way. I'm not going to say this is going to be an easy victory because I said that about Andorra and look what happened. We struggled against them. Wow, I just, I just don't know, man. I don't know what's happened with Croatia. I thought that this was going to be um, a really fun qualifying campaign, but I'm getting frustrated at the fact that they can't seem to score goals at the moment. Mario Mansukic. He spins around and that was close. Look at this. Look at this by Luxembourg. Like they were open on that wing. What on earth is going on? Here we go. Come on. Crossed in. No, Modric was there. I don't want Modric on the end of those crosses. I want Mansukic or one of the strikers, the other ones, to be on the headering end of that cross. Go on. 
Yes, nice one. Eduardo scores to make it 1-0. That took a long time, but Croatia finally did it, and it's 1-0. Here we go. Yeah, that's an easy goal, though. Nice one. Eduardo scores again, and Croatia are 2-0 up. Luxembourg just scored. Wow, okay. Well, Croatia, come on, man. I thought we were returning to form. Obviously not. We've just conceded a goal against Luxembourg. That's going to hurt the defensive stats quite a lot. Into the middle. Oh, cut out again by Stern Luxembourg. Come on, man. It hasn't really been a great performance from Croatia again. Um, there have been moments where I thought that they were back on, like, tip-top form. But it doesn't feel like it. Well, that's going to be a red card, isn't it? What are you doing? Red card for Luxembourg there, and they are down to 10 men. And there we go, we just squeezed by Luxembourg, a 2-1 victory. And again, I'm not happy with that. I'm really not happy. Even though we won, I'm still not happy. We got the reverse fixture against Luxembourg to deal with, but we're at home. Please, can we have a good performance? I put my strongest lineup out just to get away from those two teams below me, Ukraine and Northern Ireland. Um, there's every chance that Northern Ireland could steal one of those spots if we're not careful. So, please, a good result here, Croatia, and then, obviously, um, we play Northern Ireland or Austria. Serna to take the corner. He's come back from injury, finally, and so has Cranjar as well. So, that might give the squad a little bit of, well, they can link up a little bit more, maybe. Go finesse shot. Oh, it was caught nicely. Will we struggle in this game again? I mean, we can't afford to struggle against Austria and Northern Ireland. Ukraine are just absolutely having their way with Andorra right now. Through ball, and it's not going to be met. That was just too close to the keeper. Croatia are just so, I don't know, they feel off. Through ball, Olic, can he score? That was lucky that that went through, to be honest. Off the post, of course, man. If this was the hit the post competition, Croatia would have won it by now. Serna. Crossed in, it's headed. Go on, head that again. You have to head that. You have to. You were right there. And we put it wide again. In behind is Olic. Can he score? Yes, finally he scores. And just before half time, it is 1 0 to Croatia. Half time, I'm quite happy that we're 1 0 up finally. But with performances like this, I do not feel that we can beat Northern Ireland or Austria. I just feel like we're feeble in front of goal. Like, we've had eight shots to Luxembourg zero, and yet we've only got one out of it. Croatia really need to start being clinical again. And yet we can't even beat Luxembourg convincingly. It's sad, man. Into the middle of the box, and Eduardo taps it in to make it 2-0. Nice. Finally, Croatia have doubled their advantage. Go on, Olic. Can we make it free? Is Olic? No. Yeah, there we go. 3 0. And finally, we started scoring loads of goals again. Finally, Croatia. This is the kind of form I wanted all the time. Not just once every like six games. Into the middle is Luka Modric. Can he get the goal? No. Yes. <laughs> Another deflection. And Luka Modric scores that time to make it 4 for Croatia. Andorra have managed to pull one back against Ukraine. Pretty good. Comeback is on. Nah, no chance. Luxembourg stole it away from me. And we knock them over in the box and that's going to be a penalty. Again, poor defending from Croatia. It's stuff like that that just annoys me. Um, can we save this penalty? Strasser is in the orange. He scores. So it's 4-1. Unfortunate way to concede, but... Not really much you can do when it's a penalty. And that's it. We just beaten Luxembourg 4-1. And we extend our lead at the top of the table. There are two matches that left to play. And that's against Austria and Northern Ireland. We've been doing okay in this one. It feels like Croatia have been slightly falling off a, a tad. Especially when we played Andorra. They made us think twice about how our campaign was going to go. I honestly thought it was going to be absolute domination and to a degree it is but Ukraine are actually unbeaten in this group um, so what we've got to do now is beat Northern Ireland 
and just get them out of the running and then hopefully finish strong against Austria. Here we go then against Northern Ireland away from home. Will it be another massive result for Croatia just like in the first fixture against them where we smashed them 8-0? I highly doubt it. I'm sure they'll play much better than they did in that game. Obviously Northern Ireland need to win their last few matches in order to qualify. Um, and they've got a game in hand over us as well. So as, as long as we can beat them here, we will spoil their qualification. But they could quite easily spoil mine and put me into the playoff picture, Eduardo. Running past the Northern Ireland defence. Can he score? Go for it. Yes, what a goal that was. And it's 1-0 against Northern Ireland away from home. Eduardo, the goal scorer. One of the top goal scorers in European qualifying, by the way. It feels like, again, Croatia are just going through the motions. Like, they're just not really properly defending and not really properly passing. I literally passed it to Modric about two seconds ago and he let it go by him. It's like, that is not what Modric would do. No header again. I'm getting sick of teams not out headering players, especially top teams like Croatia. I really get sick and tired of teams not out headering them. That is my main pet peeve, I think, on this game, is the fact that teams don't header the ball when it gets deflected out of the box. Through ball here is Serna. Can he make anything happen? It's going through here, and he scores! Okay! Nice one, and it's 2-0 to Croatia. And you have to think now that's game over. Ukraine have finally taken the lead against Luxembourg. And Austria have also taken the lead over Andorra. Both of those minnows held on for so long. And Northern Ireland just scored from a random cross. Croatia's defending just... It's getting on my nerves. Andorra have equalised against Austria. Okay. That's um, quite surprising. The keeper's up for this one. Can Croatia get it upfield? I'd like to do that. Northern Ireland go for it and it's another corner. This has to be it surely. It's been a frustrating game but at least we got the job done. Well at the moment anyway. It's crossed in again and thankfully it's headed away. Booted upfield and Croatia taking this one. Northern Ireland have been knocked out of qualifying in that result. Unfortunate for them. They really did try hard but... Um, I was better in the end, even though I feel like I didn't play very well, still got the job done. You have a look at the table then, so we got one more game, and that will put us on 25 points. So, Ukraine have got a game in hand, and um, that's a bit frustrating, because it could send us into the playoffs. Alright, so Ukraine did win their game in hand, so everybody is on 9 games played. Um, at this moment in time, it will mean that Croatia will be going to the playoffs, which is what I didn't want. But, oh well, I guess, I guess I have to live with it if that happens. If I beat Austria, then I will have 25 points. If Ukraine beat whoever they got, they will have 26. Last match of this group stage against Austria away from home. Can we get the job done here? We did in the first match of qualifying. Um, I really just want to win just to see if Ukraine drop points. Serna out to Kranjar. Kranjar goes for it. Miles over the bar. Kranjar hasn't been good in this one. I don't know why. I know he's been injured for most of it. But the games he's played, he hasn't actually done an awful lot. Here we go. Petric. He's in behind. Can he score? He has scored. It's 1-0 to Croatia. Nice one, Petric. Oh, no. It's Olic. Sorry. Both of them are on the field anyway. I don't know why it looked like Petrich. I mean, the dude has hair. <laughs> Ukraine are playing Andorra. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Like, Ukraine, I felt that Ukraine had played Andorra and Luxembourg for most of this run. I'm fairly sure that they played them about a thousand times. Through ball here. Here comes Olic. He scores to make it 2-0. And we're making light work of Austria at the moment. Ukraine are 2-0 up against Andorra. We're going to the playoffs no matter what we do in this match. Frustrating, really. It honestly did feel like Ukraine played Luxembourg and Andorra all the time. Like, every time I was playing a different match, it felt like Ukraine were either playing Luxembourg or Andorra. That's what it really felt like to me. Obviously, I'm wrong, but, you know, that's what it felt like. Through ball here. Kranjar blocked. And we scored from the rebound. It's number two. I think that's Krizanac. Yeah, it is. Nice one. It's 3-0. Petric. Can he make it four for Croatia? Yes, he can. Nice one. That's 
pretty decent result to be fair. I'm quite happy with that. And there we go. Croatia beat Austria 4-0. A great end to this campaign. But sadly, because Ukraine played Andorra and smashed them 6-0, um, we'll be going through on the playoffs. So we've got Holland in our playoff uh, match. And that is going to be a tough match to deal with. I hope Croatia are ready. I really hope they are. Because if they're not, they'll get punished. And look at that. Two injuries out for three games. This game is so... Croatia have the chance to knock out Holland in these playoff games. We're at home for this first one. A slightly depleted squad, but it's fine, you know. We have to deal with it. Um, the game just makes up injuries on the spot. I am a little bit worried for Croatia. Our defence was... A bit shaky in normal qualifying, but this is the playoffs, it's a bit different. Modric, oh, why did you go for a little back heel like that? Don't do that. Modric, Modric, oh, that was such good dribbling in the box to avoid all those defenders. And he could have scored, Lovren. Oh, tackled in the box and there's no penalty. Of course there isn't. Referee just completely ignores it. To Modric. Oh my god, Modric. Get your shooting boots on. Eduardo. Cross that in. That's a great chance. Yes, we scored. Nice one. And I think that was Olic on the edge of that one. Uh, yes, it was. Nice one. 45 minutes played and we scored just before half time. That was a great cross. An exceptional ball win by, I think it was like Cranjar or Eduardo. Can't remember who did it. But yeah, 1 0 up against Holland. Down here to Cranjar. Into the box. Again, Modric is always the one on the end of a header. I do not want Modric on the end of a header. You know why? Because he's small. He's a small player. Eduardo in behind. He scored out of nowhere. And it's 2-0 to Croatia at home. This is a great advantage to be taking into the second game. Corner to Holland. They sent the goalkeeper up for some reason. Okay, well, that might be a bit risky. And that's it. We've just beaten Holland in the first leg 2-0. That's a strong result. Super strong result. And hopefully we can finish them off in the last game. Second leg away from home in Holland. Can we finish the job? All we need is one more goal and not to concede any more. Here comes Cerner. Already thrown goal here. Into the middle. And off the post by Olic. Eduardo. In behind, he gets taken out. Is that going to be a red card for Holland? It is a red card. And I've had a lot of those recently in these runs. Just got to be strong in this one and not give up any goals. I mean, I know the goals we scored were at home. So um, there was no away goals against us. So as long as we can just pile on the pressure on Holland. Croatia still holding on here against Holland. Even though Holland have mounted... A little bit of pressure, just to make us think twice about our aggregate lead. Eduardo. Can Eduardo finish this off? He can! And that's it. That's an away goal. And Eduardo scores. It's 3-0 on aggregate. And Holland are probably not going to this World Cup. This is a good result for Croatia because... Remember, in qualifying, we lost against Ukraine. And we struggled a little bit against Luxembourg and Andorra. Now we're here against Holland over a two-legged tie, beating them 3-0. Half-time and Croatia are leading 1-0 in this match. Overall on aggregate, it's 3-0 and um, we're looking comfortable. Through ball here, Eduardo is basically through on his own. Can he get four? He has. On aggregate, it's 4-0. Croatia absolutely flying here away from home against Holland. Olic is just racing through. He gets taken out and that's going to be a red. That's another one for Holland and they are just so bad right now. Even though Holland are down to nine men, they've been pretty decent on the ball. Not letting me have it. I'm guessing that's what you have to do when you're nine, well, down to nine men. It's just to keep passing the ball around and just not let me have anything of it. But it doesn't matter. They're not going to get back into the game. It's 4-0 on aggregate. And um, we've been amazing in this playoff match. And that's it. We've eliminated Holland in the playoffs. And we are going to the World Cup. That's really good performance on Croatia. And I hope that in the third part of this series that Croatia can go on and potentially win the World Cup. Alright, we got the draw then for this 
Croatia side, so which group are we going to end up in? Remember, Croatia did not qualify for this tournament, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of group we get. So here are the teams that are going into the pots. We're in Group F at the moment, so watch that group and see what kind of teams we get in there. So Russia in Group A, Group B, Czech Republic, Group C, Hungary, Ireland in Group D, Group E, Serbia, Belarus in Group F, okay, looking good so far. England in with Argentina, that's not good for them. And Ukraine are in with Spain, all right. Um, okay, now it's the slightly smaller teams. USA in Group A, uh, Uzbekistan in Group B, Honduras in Group C, uh, Iran in Group D, Japan in Group E, and New Zealand in Group F, okay, all right, let's not get too excited, but that's not a bad group. Uh, Costa Rica in Group G and North Korea in Group H. Alright, now it's time for the smaller teams. Oh, actually, no, they're bigger than Pot 3. What? That doesn't make any sense. These are all like the African teams, like the decent ones. So, Nigeria in A, Cameroon in B. Um, who's going to go into C? Ivory Coast, Colombia in D, uh, Senegal in E. Chile in Group F, okay, not too bad. Ghana in Group G and Uruguay will go into Group H. So that was your second part with Croatia of qualifying. I'm glad we actually did qualify. I thought we were starting to fall off, but that performance against Holland was exceptional. So if you did enjoy this, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always, and I'll see you again for the next video.